All right, guys, it's Shalon, and today I am answering a viewer question from my Twitch. I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I have an option that for 50,000 viewer points, somebody can ask a specific question. The question today is, can you give a speculation on how freeholds will work and how you expect it to interact with the world around Vera? Absolutely amazing question. I think the best place that we can start is uh, if you want to know a lot about freeholds, ashes101.com is my website. It's like a textbook. It links into the wiki and all the applicable places. So if you're looking for a lot of in-depth information, make sure you check out Ashes 101 on freeholds. Uh, for the rest of the time, I'm going to break this into two parts. I'm going to talk about facts and then some speculation. So the facts we have is number one, there is only one freehold per account across all servers. Unlike the other housing types, which is in node housing and instance departments, you can have one of those on each server. When it comes to freeholds, you can only have one on your entire account. So keep that in mind if you're gonna be playing on different servers with different groups of friends. Each freehold plot will be half an acre in size. That plot will never get bigger it will never grow there is some vertical growth we'll talk about that in just a moment now i know a lot of people are going to ask the question is will there be enough freeholds in the world i have a completely different video over there in the right hand corner on homelessness in vera now as we get into some specific freehold facts how do you get the deed to the freehold you get the deed to the freehold by going to a stage three or higher node Inside of that node, there will be somebody that will sell you a deed to the freehold and you will be able to put your freehold in the organic zone of influence of that node. Now, there has been a little bit of a change that if you buy the deed from your node's parent node, you could either place your freehold in their zone of influence or in your zone of influence, the stage three, when you have you buy it at a metro, you can put it anywhere in the five, the four, the three that falls under it. We're still waiting for some more details on that. Now you'll notice in the video that it's just out there in the open. These freeholds are out in the open. And one of these videos is older. It's pre awful footage, but it's the other freehold video we have. There are no housing zones. So people that are used to playing specifically Arc Age, uh, but maybe a little Elyon online, there's no specific place you have to put your freehold. You can place your freehold anywhere out in the world, as long as it's not on top of a point of interest, which includes roads, dungeon entrances. You can't put your freehold right up against the stage three node. The node has to have the organic footprint to grow from three to four to five to six. So you could put your freehold near the outer border of the metropolis, but you wouldn't be able to do that uh, uh, right on top of where the node is. Also, there is a standoff between freeholds. This is one thing. I am trying to get Steven to possibly change. I think married couples should be able to put freeholds next to each other. Uh, obviously, one person would drop it, and then the married spouse links on. That's something I want to talk about Steven, uh, with Steven at a later date. If you think that'd be a cool feature, go ahead and leave a comment below. Uh, now, freeholds, like I said, they never grow in size. They are always going to be a half acre footprint, but they can grow vertically. So buildings on freeholds do level up. They level up from level one to, we believe, level three, but everything is subject to change. A lot of the freehold stuff is old. So you put a tavern on your freehold, and when it levels up from level one to level two, it might grow vertically, giving you uh, an extra level of things that you can put in. Uh, we do know that freeholds may have the strategic battle map room. Uh, that is still subject to change or subject to not being in the core build at launch. Uh, we know the same thing for inns. As inns level up, they would get taller, potentially increasing the amount of inn space you have to uh, lease. Uh, we do know that in order to get the blueprints, you have to buy each individual blueprint. Now, some people believe that what's in the cosmetic cash shop every month is a building. It is not. It is only a cosmetic skin. So if you want to have a particular building, you got to get the blueprint for it first. This is for everything. This is for houses, inns, taverns, shrines, processing places, uh, the gathering pools like the farm and the fishing plot that you see in the one video. These are all things you have to buy the blueprint for. These blueprints come in different racial architecture. So 
unlike an in-node house that changes its architecture based on the node system. And if you want to know more about that, ashes101.com. When you build your house, if you build a VEC house on your freehold, it doesn't matter what the racial architecture of the node is, your freehold is yours to do what you want. Now, again, you can build a house and then change it with in-game obtainable skins or cash up skins. Buildings will also have different rarity, common, grade, uh, rare grade, legendary grade. We don't have details on how those different blueprint rarities are going to come into play. That's going to be something we're looking for in the next few months slash year of development. We do know that the best processing stations will be on freeholds but the best crafting systems stations will only be available in nodes so keep that in mind processing stations freeholds are going to be the main source of processing stations now moving from fact to speculation because the user did ask me to speculate how are freeholds going to be used well, this is a huge one because out in the world, you're not going to run into a lot of little villages. You're not the, the nodes are the center of civilization. You might find a couple of like one offs, but the freeholds are really going to be what populates those somewhat quest hubs. Tavern owners can put out quests. Uh, we we've, we've heard some other things about the freehold owners being able to generate quests. So if nothing is in an area that you're trying to like quest in, then nothing exists. So the freeholds are going to be those standalone little hamlets where transactions can occur. And you know what I'm talking about. You go to a quest hub, there's usually a few bits and pieces. So if you go to a dungeon entrance, if there is no freehold nearby with a tavern or a shop and you forgot to bring consumables, then you may have to travel all the way back to a node or a further away freehold in order to restock. So this is why one place I think you're going to see a lot of freeholds, you're going to see a lot of freeholds near dungeon entrances. Uh, if there's a gathering hotspot, uh, a place where gathering nodes commonly respawn, remember gathering doesn't work like most games, they're not on a fixed respawn, but if you've got a mine point of interest that routinely has gathering nodes, there might be a freehold nearby that's a gathering hotspot. Now, there's a couple of different ways that Intrepid could allow the freehold owner to make money, a flat charge to use the processing station, or even better, a percentage draw of what is processed there. EVE Online does this very well, and I would like to see that happen. That's another one of those things I'd like you to leave a comment. Do you think that using somebody else's processing station should be a gold surcharge or a percentage of what you refine? You also have, again, we mentioned the best processing happens on freeholds. So that's where you're going to find the absolute best animal husbandry breeders and trainers and you may not want to wait until they bring their wares into the market and have to pay all that markup. As you're traveling, you might find a freehold that looks like someone's got a pretty successful genetic breeding training facility. You might want to buy direct from them. Uh, also, since there's limited fast travel, you won't always be able to travel back to your home node after every play session. Uh, since travel time is a thing, you may end up resting at freeholds because you want to take advantage of that in overnight to get the XP boost. You might want to know where the local taverns are because when you eat food or consume drink at a tavern, if you stay in close proximity that, to that tavern, your food has an additional boost on it. Now, Intrepid did say that the acquisition of Freeholds is going to be a monumental achievement. I talked about that in the Homelessness and Vera video. Uh, I recommend that you go check out that video. I'll put a link in the description uh, below. It's also, it'll be carded over there. Uh, I, I suggest you go check out that video so you can start to hear some of maybe the problems with Freeholds. So Intrepid can maybe pivot now if we give them enough feedback and we say, okay, hold on, there, there might be a better way to do this. With that said, guys, like I said, these questions all come from my Twitch. Uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays I stream. There's a link to my Twitch in the description below. I answer questions throughout the entire show, and then some of my viewers stockpile points so that they can get their own custom YouTube video made. With that said, if you like the music you heard in the background today, there's a link to PGN Music. There's a link to the channel in the corner below or above. If you could do me a favor and go subscribe to that channel, I'm trying to get the initial 1,000 subscribers so I can get that channel monetized and then continue making more and more music.
With that said, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below, and I will answer every single one. I try to do that every single day. You guys take care, and I will see you next time, either live on Twitch or when I'm doing a YouTube video for somebody.